labored it in our apartment for many hours and then felt like oh. it was time to go and as soon as I got to the hospital they told me to that I needed to screw a monitor into the baby's head and they, I needed to be strapped down into a bed and I wasn't in the birthing room that they told me I'd be in and I knew completely with every ounce of my being that this was not right for me. Right, and the my, labor and, stopped. And my labor stopped. Completely, and there was a lady down the hall giving birth, swearing at the top of her lungs, mm -hmm. which didn't seem like where we needed to be. She, there was some, there was some very interesting stuff going on there. It was a circus. Sometimes people come to a midwife and they say, you know, now what are you going to be doing? And I say, well, really, very little. And some of them are surprised, and some of them are grateful, and some of them aren't quite sure that that's the way midwives ought to be. But um, for me, it works. I tell them I'm, to, I'm there to make sure it keeps going well through the pregnancy, through the labor, through the birth, through the postpartum, and to offer suggestions. Uh, but, you know, you don't have to take them necessarily. started to happen and I remember having the feeling like oh this is how it's supposed to be this is how it's supposed to be I understand I understand and I we're trying to enhance the woman's resources for giving birth having her feel safe so that the hormones will flow having her feel uh, competent and have the ability to get up and walk around if she wants um, those things are completely taken away from the woman who is having a medicalized or industrialized birth. And, you know, in my darkest moments, I ask myself and I've asked others, if we remove birth from the life cycle, giving birth and being born, what will that do to the human species? I mean, I really do wonder. That we are being sort of led down a little path like, well, this is not working, she's in a lot of pain, she's tired. And if you're not equipped to know what you're dealing with and what, the, you know, what a body is capable of doing, that you're going to be just led down this path that, they want, that they'll want you to go down. For whatever reasons, there could be political reasons, insurance reasons, money reasons, all that kind of stuff, but you're kind of led down this path. 
you, you feel like something happened that you weren't privy to, that you didn't understand what was going on until you can kind of look at it more objectively after the birth. I think for me what was hard was I was trying to reconcile um, this, this feeling that I couldn't even define. Um, I was thrilled at Joy's birth in terms of her health, and I was well. I was recovering well from my surgery. I didn't have any major complications after my C-section, thankfully. Um, you know, and I mean, I felt that instant bond of love with my daughter and just overwhelmed by how in incredible it is to love a person that much that it was just unreal. So all that was there for me, yet there was this other kind of undercurrent that I couldn't define that felt sort of like disappointment, but was stronger than that. Um, I think the word that comes to mind is feeling robbed of something or um, that something was taken. Uh, but I couldn't define it and I, and I almost didn't want to have that feeling. Um, so I figured, okay, it's, it's just hormones or something else I'm, that will pass in time. Um, yet I couldn't shake it and I was, and I was having like um, significant sadness. And I, w I started talking to my women friends and, and sharing with Chris. And Chris, you know, would reiterate sort of like, but our baby's well and she's healthy. And I'm like, I know, but there's some, I'm kind of disappointed that we didn't have the birth that we were going for. I mean, we wanted a natural birth and we got the works, you know, and that's not what I wanted. Birth is the opposite of everything our society says is good. It's dirty, it's messy, it's, um, it's... And it's scary. It's scary. It's, uh, it's, um... It's dangerous. dangerous. It could be ugly, you know? We don't want to see that. We're supposed to be beautiful and clean and tidy, and that's where our power comes from, being beautiful, clean, and tidy. So we're actually letting go of our power by going into birth. Right? And that's terrifying. It, it always surprises me how, in what ways that I see this, you know, all through the labor process in the hospital, from not knowing where the baby's at or what's going on, or um, when they're pushing out their baby, we ask them, you know, do you want a mirror so you can see? And they say, oh no, that's just, that's gross. And they don't want it to look at their bottom at all. They don't want to see that. They don't want to see the baby's head. We'll offer, do you want to reach down and, and touch the baby's head? And most of them say, ew, gross. And a few that will reach down and touch, feel it, and it's kind of slimy. And so then they go, ah, and then they kind of wipe their hand. And sometimes the baby will come out and we'll put that on their stomach and it's, you know, wet and bloody and squalling. And they'll be like, ooh, like, get it off. Like, they just don't want that part, that, that primal nature part. They just have completely lost touch with all of that. There's a red one, baby. Look, there's a red one right there. <laughs> what happened is we had a burning tub on our little patio in our backyard. There wasn't really room for it in the living room. I didn't want to be tripping over it in the bedroom, and it was warm enough. Anyway, I got into the warm water, and um, the water didn't quite reach up to my shoulders. So I was like, you know, I don't know how long I'll stay in here. And Bob went to get me a robe. And for a very short time, I think that was about the only contraction of the whole birth, that he wasn't with me, touching me, looking in my eyes. My eyes were closed a lot of the time. <laughs> um, was I looked up at the stars... And um, and looking, yeah, I think I'm going to cry <laughs> because just being able to be in warm water, 
feeling my body doing what it was doing because I was looking up during a contraction and it felt and it was a strong one. <laughs> but looking up at the stars and then as it eased, I could kind of enjoy the stars even more. And then it, I almost feel as if that's as if that's when Vivian, you know, that's when she came to me. Kind of that's. You know, it's like she came down from heaven. It was that connection with nature. I mean, I was in, I had looked up at those stars, you know, for so many years and on that same patio. And then that was, yeah, being connected to nature. I mean, being able to be in water and outside and relaxed, knowing I was being taken care of. You know, Bob was coming back with my robe. He, you know, he was doing something for me. But um, that was just really magical. And... I would want that for both my daughters. I don't know if they'll have babies, but I would want them to have a magical moment because, you know, in this, you know, in this life, we, do, we don't know what's going to happen, but that's, that's an experience, yeah, that it's going to go with me, <laughs> you know, when I pass on. And, uh, yeah, I feel really grateful to have had that. put them in like cherry tomatoes and apple. He could have a friend. He's going around. You think they can be friends? Um, we've been we've been trained on the idea that you you ignore pretty much your feminine instinct about medicine and you go on what the data is, what the laboratory tests are, what um, the monitors are showing you and that's how you make medical decisions. Um, just because there's more women in the field doesn't mean that we're now allowed to um, rest on what we intuitively feel or know about a situation or um, letting the mother, just sitting back and letting the mother um, be in charge and holding that space. That's, that's not how medicine works and so we're not allowed to do that either. Um, and I do definitely notice that difference with what I've seen of, of midwives and, and the home births is that their model of care is completely different. Like midwifery and obstetrics are totally different fields. And it's somewhat frustrating for someone like me who um, recognizes how beautiful and important that is, but I'm an obstetrician. And some days it's difficult because I wonder, did I make the wrong choice and go into the wrong specialty? And should I have done it differently and been a midwife from the start? Humanization of childbirth is giving back protagonism to women and the rest is just sophistication of care. But to give, to give protagonism to women is to make women make the choices. Well, if women don't know the choices that she has, she has no choice. So we need to show women that birth can be a very powerful event, can even be an orgasmic event, it can be a very pleasurable event, and she can have her babies with safety and without drugs and without interventions. And use interventions, use drugs and use even surgeries only when it is really necessary because all of these interventions carry risks. And if we can have a woman without any of these risks, that's our obligation to offer her the best that she can have. The path through that is through feminization of childbirth. That's why I think the doula programs and having a doula beside a woman and having the midwifery model of care is one of the most powerful paths. So um, with Nina's birth, the one who's nursing now, um, Elena had asked me, my midwife had asked me if uh, a doctor, an obstetrician could, or OBGYN could be present. And of course I was open to that. I thought it was wonderful. And, her name was Jenny, and she her experience with it was so, I think, she had never seen anything like it, and she actually said at the end of the birth, or the end of the day, that um, it was the most beautiful thing that she had seen. And she didn't just say the most beautiful birth that she had seen, I think it was bigger than that to her. It was gonna bring something different to how she dealt with her patients, and I thought that was so beautiful that she was open to coming to this, that she wasn't so, into her ego that she felt like she knew and she was going to come here and teach us something and she was going to be taught. She was open to being taught. And I really work operate by the idea that of the old Zen saying, the essence of wisdom is to act in harmony with nature. So I always look at what I'm, we have medicine just to act in harmony with 
what's supposed to be naturally. And so for labor, we have our, our tools and our surgery and our, our monitors um, when we need it, but we are to act with nature, not against it. And a lot of what I see with obstetrics is we're completely unnatural and exactly opposite of nature. And my approach and my, my goal for my future is to, um, is to act with nature and integrate the best of all of the worlds. Um, so to that end, I, I study what I can of midwifery um, knowing that I'm not a midwife, but wholly respecting that profession and wanting to bring as much of it as I can into the hospital where I think it can make a huge difference. And so to that end, um, I uh, have worked with other similar-minded people and with Elena to bring in some of that knowledge and, and pass it on to other people I work with. You've yeah. got so much more time with a midwife. All they do is deliver babies. They've got a track record of hundreds, thousands of healthy babies. And if you just think through it, you know, of course, well, you're getting better clearly care. it works. Like, like people don't understand that, like, yeah, they just are trained to think that, you know, some letters at the end of a name, not in the midwife, but that idea of like the power or something. Um, yeah, it's better to care to have someone there holding your hand or putting water on your back or, you know, yeah. I'm just thinking about what babies really need. It's so simple. They need their mothers. Mm. They need skin-to-skin -skin contact with their mothers, access to the breasts, and to hear her soothing voice. Mm. And that is the hardest thing to manage in today's hospitals, mm. to have unlimited access to their mothers.